Today, we are going to dive into an extremely important aspect of semiconductor manufacturing, clean room protocols and safety measures. A clean room is not just a fancy lab. It's a highly controlled environment that makes modern VLSI fabrication possible. Without strict protocols, even a single particle of dust can destroy a microchip that has millions or billions of transistors. Over the course of this session, we will cover what a clean room is, its classifications, sources of contamination, how to enter and work inside it, and the safety measures required. We'll also look at leading semiconductor companies, their technology nodes, and why maintaining these protocols is crucial for both yield and worker safety. What is a clean room? A clean room is essentially an engineered environment where the air is continuously filtered to remove particles, chemical vapors, and microorganisms. These rooms maintain specific temperature, humidity, and pressure conditions to ensure the highest purity possible. In semiconductor fabs, even particles smaller than a micron, which is invisible to the human eye, can cause fatal defects in chips. Clean rooms are classified according to standards like ISO 14644 and the older US Federal Standard 290. For example, Class 1 clean rooms are used for the most critical processes like EUV lithography where the tolerance for contamination is near zero. Clean rooms are also widely used in industries like biotechnology and aerospace where product reliability is critical. Role of clean rooms in semiconductor fabrication As we begin, let's remind ourselves why clean rooms are essential in semiconductor manufacturing. Semiconductor wafers, especially in VLSI processes, are incredibly sensitive to contamination. Even a single dust particle can short a circuit or render a device unusable. Clean rooms are controlled environments designed to eliminate such risks by maintaining strict limits on airborne particles, temperature, humidity, and electrostatic charge. In VLSI fabrication, these environments ensure not just device performance but also production yield, as a single contamination event can ruin multiple wafers. Without this level of environmental control, the defect rate would be far too high for commercial viability. Clean Room Classifications ISO 14644-1 Clean rooms are classified based on the maximum number of particles allowed per cubic meter at specific particle sizes. In this table, you can see that ISO Class 1 allows only 10 particles per cubic meter of size 0.1 microns or larger. This is the cleanest possible environment in industrial use today, typically seen in cutting-edge UV lithography areas. An ISO Class 5 clean room, which allows 100,000 particles of 0.1 microns, is used in wafer processing steps where absolute cleanliness is still critical but slightly more tolerance is acceptable. ISO Class 7 clean rooms, allowing over 350 million particles per cubic meter, are for less sensitive processes like packaging. The point is, as you go up in class number, the tolerance for contamination increases, but the applications shift to less critical manufacturing stages. Sources of contamination When we talk about contamination inside a fab, people often think about dust from outside. But in reality, the biggest source of contamination is the human body itself. Every minute, we shed skin flakes, hair, and clothing fibers. Even our breath carries micro droplets that can settle on wafers. The second source is the process tools. These can generate particles from mechanical wear or from lubricants and chemicals. The environment, even when filtered, can introduce trays, dust or microbes if the filtration fails or is overloaded. Materials themselves, like packaging or chemicals, can release particles or vapors that settle on wafers. Each of these sources needs specific protocols to control. Clean room protocols. Now, let's talk about how we control contamination. The first step is entry procedure. Before anyone enters, they typically pass through an air shower that blasts off loose particles from clothing. Then comes gowning, wearing a full bunny suit, gloves, masks, and sometimes double layers of protection depending on the clean room class. Sticky mats at entrances trap particles from shoes. Once inside, behavior becomes critical. No unnecessary movement. 
because movement generates air turbulence which can spread particles. Avoid touching any surface unnecessarily. And always use tools specifically designated for the clean room to prevent cross-contamination from outside environments. Risks of not following protocols If clean room protocols are ignored, the consequences are severe. The first is yield loss. An increase in defect density can quickly make a batch of wafers unusable, costing millions of dollars. Contamination can also damage equipment by clogging or corroding precision parts, leading to downtime. Safety hazards from chemical or gas exposure put workers at risk and can trigger shutdowns. Finally, a company's reputation can be damaged, especially if defective products reach customers, resulting in recalls and loss of trust. In short, skipping protocols affects product quality, worker safety, and the company's bottom line. Clean room gowning equipment. The gowning process is very systematic. The bunny suit is the main garment, made from special non-linting materials that prevent fibers from escaping. Face masks are used to block saliva and micro droplets when talking. Hair nets prevent stray hairs from entering the air. Gloves protect both the product from our natural skin oils and us from potential exposure to hazardous materials. Each of these has a specific order in which it is worn, and in many fabs, gowning areas are divided into dirty and clean zones so that the act of dressing itself doesn't introduce contamination. Positive air pressure and air flow patterns One critical design principle is maintaining positive air pressure inside the clean room. This means the air pressure inside is slightly higher than in adjacent areas, typically by 5 to 20 pascals. The purpose is to ensure that whenever a door is opened, clean filtered air flows out rather than contaminated air flowing in. The air itself is filtered using HEPA filters, which remove 99.97% of particles at 0.3 microns or ULPA filters which can remove even finer particles down to 0.12 microns at efficiencies of 99.999%. Additionally, we use laminar flow patterns which direct air in a uniform stream, pushing contaminants down and away from work surfaces. This structured air flow is as important as filtration itself because poor air circulation can create stagnant pockets where particles accumulate. Types of clean rooms Now, Let's look at the two primary types of clean rooms, laminar flow and turbulent flow. Both use HEPA or ULPA filtration to remove particles from the air, but the airflow patterns differ significantly. In a laminar flow clean room, the air moves in a single, uniform direction, usually from ceiling to floor, at a consistent velocity. The stainless steel filters ensure minimal turbulence, which means fewer opportunities for particles to swirl back into the work zone. This design is ideal for the most contamination-sensitive processes like photolithography in submicron and nanometer scale VLSI manufacturing, where even a tiny particle can ruin a mask or wafer. By contrast, a turbulent flow clean room does not rely on unidirectional air movement. Instead, it maintains constant circulation with changing airflow directions. It still uses HEPA or ULPA filtration, but often with localized laminar flow hoods over critical work areas. This design is more economical and is often used for processes with lower contamination sensitivity. For example, in assembly or packaging areas where particle size and count requirements are less strict. In short, laminar flow clean rooms give us extremely high control at higher operational costs while turbulent flow clean rooms are more flexible and cost-effective for less critical environments. Comparison table or laminar and turbulent flow. In short, laminar flow clean rooms give us extremely high control at higher operational costs, while turbulent flow clean rooms are more flexible and cost-effective for less critical environments. Pictorial representation of laminar and turbulent flow. As depicted in the picture, air enters from a high-efficiency filter in system having parallel inlets enabling the flow of air in one direction. This takes the pollutants away to the parallelly arranged exhaust system. Whereas in the other system, air inlet is centralized and air circulate in the chamber, which may be in any directions before going to exhaust system. Positive air pressure and air flow patterns 
The air pressure inside the chamber is kept high as compared to surrounding air pressure so that when the door opens the air flows out of the chamber minimizing the entry of the pollutants inside the chamber. A positive pressure difference of 5 to 20 pascal is kept. This provides a HEP efficiency of 99.97% for 0.3 micrometer and ULAPA efficiency of 99.999% for 0.12 micrometer. ESD, Electrostatic Discharge, Control in Clean Rooms Another major risk in clean room environments is electrostatic discharge or ESD. I components at nanometer technology nodes are extremely susceptible to damage from static charges as low as a few tens of volts. To prevent this, we use ESD safe flooring materials that dissipate static as well as workbenches with conductive surfaces. Personal wear grounded wrist straps and conductive garments that prevent charge buildup. Even the chairs and carts are ESD rated. In some facilities, there are continuous monitoring systems at each workstation to verify that grounding connections are intact at all times. Without ESD control, we might lose entire batches of chips before they even leave the wafer stage. Chemical Storage and Labeling Protocols VLSI fabrication involves many hazardous chemicals, from strong acids like HF and H to SO4 to solvents like acetone and isopropanol. Proper storage is essential for both safety and contamination control. Chemicals are stored in ventilated cabinets with secondary containment trays to catch leaks. Incompatible chemicals, such as acids and solvents, are stored separately to avoid dangerous reactions. Every container must have a label indicating its chemical name, hazard classification, handling precautions, and expiry date. Even a mislabeled bottle can lead to accidents, cross-contamination or process failures. This is why material safety data sheets or MSDS are kept accessible in the clean room for every chemical in use. Specialized clean room attire. Personnel are one of the biggest contamination sources in clean rooms, shading skin particles, hair and fibers. To minimize this, we use specialized clean room garments, often called bunny suits. These include full body coveralls, hoods, masks, gloves, and boot covers, all made from non-linting fabrics. Goggles are worn to protect eyes from both chemicals and stray particles. Importantly, these garments are not washed in normal laundry facilities. They are laundered in dedicated clean room garment services that prevent lint and chemical residue from entering the clean room environment. The dressing procedure itself is carefully controlled to ensure no uncovered skin or street clothing is exposed. Material pass-through and entry protocols Any object entering a clean room is a potential contamination source. For materials and tools, we use pass-through chambers, small interlocked cabinets that allow materials to be transferred without letting unfiltered air in. Personnel themselves pass through air showers where high-velocity HEPA-filtered air blows off particles from clothing before entry. Materials are often cleaned with isopropyl alcohol wipes or other approved solvents before being brought inside. Even packaging materials, like cardboard, are generally prohibited inside the clean room, as they shed fibers and particulates. Safety measures in semiconductor clean rooms Clean rooms are not just about contamination control. They are also about safety. We deal with hazardous chemicals like hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid, all of which require specific personal protective equipment and handling procedures. Toxic and flammable gases such as arsine and silane must be handled with gas cabinets, leak detectors, and emergency shutoff systems. High voltage equipment in fabs means electrical safety protocols like lockout. Tagout are mandatory before servicing machines. Finally, every clean room has emergency procedures for spills, fires, and chemical leaks, and workers are trained regularly on evacuation routes and containment measures. Emergency and safety infrastructure. Despite all precautions, emergencies can occur. Chemical spills, fires, or gas leaks. Clean rooms are equipped with safety systems designed to protect both personnel and the integrity of the facility. Emergency showers and eye wash stations are placed at easily accessible points so workers can quickly decontaminate in case of chemical exposure. 
fire suppression systems are designed to work in a clean room environment. For example, using inert gases rather than water to avoid damaging sensitive equipment. Gas detection systems continuously monitor for toxic or flammable gases. Regular safety drills ensure that every staff member knows how to respond without hesitation. Contamination monitoring and logging. Maintaining a clean room isn't just about building it correctly. It's about continuous monitoring. Particle counters measure airborne contamination in real time, giving immediate alerts if levels exceed acceptable thresholds. Surfaces are tested for microbial contamination using swabs, especially in areas handling photoresists or sensitive wafers. All activities are logged, from maintenance work to cleaning schedules, so that any contamination event can be traced back to its source. Scheduled deep cleaning is performed on floors, walls, and ceilings using approved cleaning agents, ensuring that the facility always operates within its designated cleanliness class. Semiconductor Fab Leaders and Technology Nodes Here we compare some of the leading semiconductor manufacturers. Taiwan's TSMC currently leads in 3 nanometers manufacturing with very high yields and advanced UV lithography. But these processes are extremely costly. Samsung in South Korea also produces at 3 nanometers and is an early adopter of GAFE technology, though yield challenges remain. Intel, based in the USA, operates as an integrated device manufacturer, meaning they control both design and manufacturing. They are currently producing at Intel 4, which is roughly equivalent to the industry's 7 nanometers naming, with advanced packaging technology but have faced delays in transitioning to smaller nodes. Understanding these players helps students appreciate the competitive nature of semiconductor manufacturing and the importance of maintaining yield, which cleanroom protocols directly impact. Summary In summary, cleanrooms are a foundational part of VLSI manufacturing. Their ability to maintain an ultra-clean environment relies on engineering controls like air filtration and on human discipline through strict protocols. Safety measures are equally important protecting both the delicate wafers and the people who work with hazardous materials. In the global semiconductor race, maintaining these standards is not optional. It's a competitive necessity.